This video is freeware, so you can use it as you wish. Gaddafi arrested. Good day. I'm Colonel Jerry Morlock, the director of the Combat Studies Institute. You're about to use a video series which our instructors have prepared for the sole purpose of improving your presentation of M610, The Evolution of Modern Warfare. We've taken care to make the course that you teach as similar to the one taught at Fort Leavenworth as possible and choose to add these tapes to your libraries in order to give you every advantage as you prepare to teach this new course. These tapes are similar to the weekly train-up sessions which we utilize to prepare our instructors here at Fort Leavenworth. My intent for the tape sessions was to provide you insights and tips on ways to approach the lessons of M610 that were not available in the instructor notes. I've drawn various instructors, military and civilian, into the sessions based upon their specific expertise and historical background. They were asked to just talk to the lesson structure and content, giving you some additional information on the historical context and differing views on how to approach the lessons. These tapes will provide you a wealth of knowledge and direction that will significantly improve your readiness to teach our new history course. One word of caution regarding how to use these training tapes. They are not designed to be substituted for your instruction during the individual lessons of the course. As instructor preparation tapes, train the trainer material, if you will, they are inappropriate for direct instruction to students and are not intended for that purpose. Our intent with these tapes is to improve your ability to lead the student seminars by sharing tips and advice from some highly qualified experts. The Combat Studies Institute stands ready to provide whatever additional expertise or assistance that you may require, and we've included the Institute's phone, mail, and email contact information on the tape if you should need it. Good luck with the Evolution of Modern Warfare course, and have a good time. Hello, and welcome to Fort Leavenworth. I'm Dr. Sam Lewis with the Combat Studies Institute. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. George Garrich, lesson author today. Our purpose today is to talk to you informally about how to approach our lesson in MS 610 on the Arab-Israeli War. George? Before I begin, I'd like to introduce my colleagues. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Sylvia Pierce, uh, a Latin America specialist. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Walt Kretschik, and I am a Middle East specialist. Let me begin by first giving you an idea of the format that we'll be using for today's uh, presentation. If you look at the board, we'll be looking at first the methodology, the different ways that you can uh, teach this lesson, get the most out of the time that you have. Then we'll look at uh, the issue of the background to the war, what sorts of issues you could raise to generate discussion. Then we'll look at the conduct of the war, what transpires operationally, tactically, and strategically within the uh, war itself. And then we'll conclude by looking at what are the results of this war, what impact does it have on the evolution of warfare, and what issues you could raise there. Uh, before we get into looking at uh, the methodology, I think one issue you should keep in mind and you might address to your students is why are we studying this lesson? And the uh, readings will give you an idea of why this lesson is important. Uh, after World War II, uh, we saw that war moved out of Europe and the big general wars are taking place elsewhere, wars that could be studied as conventional wars with the latest technology. And the Arab-Israeli conflict fits into that mold where certainly with 67 war and on, other countries are studying what is going on in that region and they're drawing lessons. And for us, it has a major impact, and we'll talk about that in the results part and how it affects our doctrine. Now, if you think about different ways to approach the lesson, one of the things you have to consider is what the readings are. The basic text will just give you an idea of the 67 war and what happens in the 73 war and on. That's good background for the students. 
this uh, LP was written with the idea that you could look at the interaction of strategic, operational, and tactical dimensions, spheres of war, and how they interact in preparing for war, the conduct of war, and its fallout. One thing that you might consider to give yourself some time and get the students involved is, rather than have everyone read the entire LP, is to uh, have students do small briefings. Because you're uh, out there in the field and there's a lot of interest and concern with tactics and operations, one consideration that you might have is to look at two battles that are covered in this LP. One is the 8th of October counterattack by the Israelis. Assign that to a student, have the rest not read that section, and it covers basically the pages 39 to 53. Have the student give a briefing on what transpires during this battle and what's its significance for the war. Another battle that you could look at is Chinese Farm. Chinese Farm takes place to the latter part of the war, and have another student look at those same kinds of issues that you do in a battle analysis format. Uh, if you look at uh, the battle analysis format and the importance of each of these battles, you might consider the 8th of October is the last serious attempt by the Israelis to stop the crossing of the Egyptians. And as you look at what transpires during this battle, ask the students to look at what is the strategic setting, and what part of the war is, is this taking place, and what's the overall strategic environment. Ask the student to look at what are the opposing plans, what are the opposing objectives of each side. Then look at how the tactical events unfold and what are some of the problems that transpire on the battlefield when the Israelis try to counterattack against the Egyptians. You could ask your students certain kinds of issues, and we'll talk about them in the latter part of today's presentation, that are specific to this battle. Do the same thing for the Chinese farm battle. Ask those same kinds of issues for the uh, student, and that will take some time. It will get the student involved in doing a presentation, probably get some insights from them, and then the students can react to their presentation. George, uh, you mentioned the battle analysis uh, methodology. Do you have a an example of what that would be like, what kinds of questions, uh, just in case the folks out there don't have uh, anything to go by. Okay, you, you could begin by raising the issue, what is the strategic setting? Uh, what is going on in the larger context of the war? What kinds of battles have transpired? Uh, what are the objectives of the war until that point, and how much have they been met on the battlefield? And then look at where each side is on the battlefield in terms of tactical and operational situation. Then you ask the question, well, what are the objectives and plans that each side has uh, for uh, conducting the next day's operation? And that will be for the 8th of October. You would ask uh, questions like, what are the tactical objectives? How are they fitting into the larger operational objectives? And how might they meet the strategic objectives? And ask yourself the question, are these plans the best possible? What are some other options that could have been done? What are the goals? Are the goals are attainable? Does each side have a clear picture of what's going on? Those are some of the issues you can raise as we look at the plans unfolding and objectives for the next day. Then look at the actual conduct of the battle. Uh, how does the engagement start out? What are the, begin the changes that start taking place in plans? Because as we know, plans usually undergo change with the first shot. Look at those reactions each side is making to what the other side is, is doing. And then focus on what you think are the key tactical events of that day or, that, or several days, if it's a battle that lasts several days. And evaluate how well were those tactical events uh, conducted by each side. Uh, look at issues of command, look at issues of training, look at issues of doctrine. Uh, did they help each side or did they hinder each side? Each side is going in with a particular doctrine, a particular style of leadership, a particular way of approaching the war. Then after um, you look at the entire battle, see where it ends up. Where are the sides at? Did they meet their objectives? And what impact does it have on subsequent battles? Or if it's toward the end of the war, how does it help end the war? Those are some of the kinds of issues that you would, could address when you look at a battle. And if you want, we can send or include as part of the packet an overall format that we have developed at CSI that deals with a very detailed approach. And there are tons of questions there, but you wouldn't answer every one of them because some pertain, some don't. Uh, so we could do that. Thank you. Any other? I think that about methodology. 
I think that, that the approach that George laid out is, is a very standard one, and, and from someone who's had to follow this methodology myself, it's very easy to learn. I think that one of the keys that we're trying to get into, though, is the historical legacy uh, that the 73 war is going to bring uh, for the future, and therefore there is also a connection to the past. One of the things that's important is to examine the leadership, both at the strategic and operational level initially, and how the 1967 war affected their decision making. Part of what George will get into in a little more detail will be uh, how the war is going to unfold. I think it's important for us to realize that some of the experience judgments uh, that commanders make are a direct reflection upon past events, and I think that that's a key point that you may want to bring out with your students. One of the thoughts that you might uh, entertain is trying to connect this lesson to things that you've done in the past with this course. One of the things that strikes me, if you look at Israel's geostrategic situation, it's very similar to that of Frederick the Great. We have a small state with uh, larger states around it. We have a, a terrain that's not favorable for the defense. We have limited resources. And we have uh, similarities in the style of war that seems to be evolving in Prussia as in Israel. You'd like to take the fight into the enemy's territory. You want to have your army be of higher quality than your opponents. March faster or drive faster, be more disciplined, and you take more care in developing your military. You, re, you assign more resources than societies around you, more energy toward developing a first-class military. So you might draw parallels between uh, Prussia and Frederick the Great and his geostrategic situation and how he goes about winning and look at uh, Israel's situation. There are similarities and there are differences. One is a more authoritarian state 200 years earlier. Uh, uh, Israel is more a democracy with uh, dependence on reserves, citizen soldiers fighting. You don't see that in Prussia under Frederick the Great. But there are certain similarities, and they'll see that uh, there are things that can be drawn from the past, and you can understand why Israel has been infatuated with studying German military history. That's a very sophisticated idea. It has the advantage of bringing the students back to looking at the entire course. Where did we start off? And how far have we come? What has changed since the course started? Um, we saw Frederick the Great resort to the offensive using uh, um, audacity, maneuver. How appropriate is that in uh, 1973? Exported to a different continent. Uh, compare the role of uh, fixed fortifications in 1740 versus uh, 1973. Uh, the use of firepower, how has that changed? Uh, logistics, in what way was Frederick limited? What sort of uh, limitations are on uh, the militaries in uh, 1973? Uh, now, I think that would be a good tool. I've... Uh, I've approached this particular war in different ways over the years. One is to look at it in three separate categories. Look, I start off at the strategic level and look at what's happening for both sides. Uh, and when that's wrapped up, move over to the operational, cover both sides, and then move on to the tactical and, uh, and move on. Um, that has worked in the past. Um, in recent years, I've walked in, and the first question I've asked is, has anyone served with or next to the Israeli military or the Egyptian military? And if so, ask them what sort of... Uh, institutions these were. Were they like the U.S. Army or different? Um, you never can tell. Uh, but quite frequently there is someone who has had some experience with uh, one of those militaries and uh, they can share their knowledge about what it's like. Is their military culture like ours or different? What is similar? Um, and you can use that as a launching pad to look at the two armies as they were. Uh, and then move into their geopolitical situation, their strengths, their weaknesses, uh, and eventually their doctrine.
one other thing to look at as we look at the comparisons. We look at comparisons between Egypt and Israel at the time during the war. We also need to draw comparisons or draw um, relations, uh, relationships between Egypt, Israel, and... See perhaps also. The is 24th April 2005. After the first and the second contact. See, it is possible. These videos. Only 22 days passed. And then...